Professor Mohan Ramanan, the chairman of this session, uh, Professor Amna, Professor Shagufta, uh, yes, Professor Vyapa, Vyapa Tosa, please forgive me, and Professor Kachimani. Professor Kachimani made a wonderful presentation. What I found in his presentation was this, that and which has a lesson for all the postgraduate students here. We have been lost in the labyrinth of Anglo-American criticism, Deridian, post-Deridian, whatever you call it. We are judging things by European standards. In the Indian context, I'm of the opinion that this is high time that Indian scholars become introspective look into the Indian society, what's happening. How can you judge Indian situation totally from the European point of view? Now, Professor Katimani has presented a very good idea about the Dalit literature, although a number of scholars have done work on Dalit literature, but I think he has a few very good things to say here, which I would appreciate. For instance, he has mentioned some autobiographies in Marathi, Kannad, and Hindi. Well, I, this reminds me of a wonderful book I read some time back, long time back rather, 60s. The name was Sanskriti Ke Char Adhyay by Dr. Ramdhari Singh Dinka. Now, if you happen to read that book, you will really find that Ramdhari Singh Dinka is talking about Dalits in India. Adivasis in India. And what he's trying to say is that social justice, equality, fraternity, all the big words that we talk about today has been denied to the Adivasis and the Dalits. In the United States of America today, they are talking about native literature, literature of the Native Americans. And a lot of funding is being done for that. I'm not sure how much funding is being done by the government of India or the state governments when it comes to Dalit Sahitya or Adivasi Sahitya or minority like Muslim discourse. Professor, there are a few suggestions I would like to make here. Of course, uh, I think the participants should be given chance to say something. But you have talked about Kathni and Karni. You talked about human values. From time immemorial, what has happened exactly is this. As far as Indian scholars are concerned, they have always been, I would not say time immemorial, I would rather say in the uh, British time and the post-British era, Indian scholars have been looking westward. It is time that they look into the Indian situation and see what's happening here. We have been fed on the diet of the French Revolution, liberty, fraternity, equality. Very high sounding words. We are talking of democracy today. We talk of secularism today. We talk of it, socialism and all that is stuff. But the fact remains that the situation, which is the ground situation at the grassroots, has not changed. The caste system, which has affected Indian society like cancer has really affected not just the minds of people, but the sensibilities of people also. I would like to say here at this juncture, Prof, that there is one thing which I could not understand. Maybe the students will ask you the question. Why did you say the symbol here, searching for a father? What do you mean when you say searching for a father? Uh, I would like to know what you mean by that. And another thing that I noticed here, when you talk of Dalit Sahit in India, I would like to say here, it's not across the Indian states, but even outside India today. There are a number of Indian scholars now working in Canada and United States who are working on Dalit Sahit. Now, I would like to say, if you want to enrich your research, please get in touch with those scholars. They have published books also, not just they are writing. They are publishing poems, stories, books, and all that stuff. Well, your focus is basically on the autobiography. Your focus is on the autobiography. Uh, that's a new thing to happen. 
In fact, autobiography has been very much neglected in our researches, particularly Adivasi and the Dalit autobiographies. Um, I would not say that, um, uh, but uh, let, me, let me make it clear that we in our universities are living very much in ivory towers. We teach literature and we are trying to isolate literature, separate literature from the realities of life. I'm of the opinion that literature is grounded in life, the realities of life must be reflected. And that would be the honesty of the author. So when we judge the Indian authors, or authors who write about Adivasis and Dalit Sahitya, I believe that a professor is trying to recommend a new kind of poetics. And I support that idea. A new kind of poetics is needed. If we simply go by the Western ideas of poetics, we go by the political, uh, very much politically infested, politically infected theories of literature, I think we may not be able to do justice to the Indian context. Thank you very much. Participants are free to ask questions, please. Sawadika. That's a greeting word from Thailand. Uh, when we see each other, we say sawaddi. And when we leave each other, we say the same word, sawaddi. So it's both hello and goodbye. Uh, I'm very honored to be here. And I thank Professor Ramanan and also the English department here for uh, accepting me as uh, uh, one of the speakers. I come from a, a different background than any of the scholars here. Um, when I heard the word new frontier in uh, research, I was thinking of what to say. And then I heard of the topic of the uh, seminar on this time is non-native uh, English, then I feel maybe I can say something about that because I'm from Thailand. And I would like to uh, let you know that uh, I come from a background of uh, or training in English and American literature. And then in the, I went to study at Drew University in Madison, New Jersey for my PhD. And towards the end, after I finished my coursework, I ran out of budget or money. I went on my own money. And so I didn't know what to do. I was trying to look for money for grant to study. And then I thought of maybe I could translate some Northeast Thai folk epics into English. And I could get, there were some uh, translation grants available. So I, apply for the uh, National Endowment for the Humanities in the US, uh, proposing to translate 18 Northeast Thai folk epics into English verse in uh, one year. Of course, I didn't get the grant because that's really impossible for anyone to do, to translate uh, the folk epic into English verse. But by doing that, by <laughs> Uh, going into the process of uh, trying to get the example of folk literature and trying to uh, write a translation as example, I found that my own folk literature in Northeast Thailand is as good as any classical literature in the West, whether it's Greek, Roman, or English, or American. And so I turned to my own literature, and it was in America that I found that my own literature was as good. And by the end of my uh, program, I proposed to translate uh, one of the Northeast Thai folk epic called Pa Dang Nai. And I said, maybe, but I believe that, you know, since I, I strongly believe that I could do it, but the committee agreed to let me do it, and I did it in one year, which is, uh, when I was doing it, it was like I was going back to my root. So it's not difficult uh, to, to do it, uh, as I had thought uh, before. And then after that, I began to work on more of the folk literature. I translated another uh, folk epic called Paya Khan Kak, or The Toad King, uh, into English. Uh, with the uh, funding from uh, Fulbright Foundation. 
Uh, the first one actually, Pa Deng Nang Ai, my dissertation was funded by uh, Witter Binner Foundation po for Poetry in New Mexico. And that's how I could get through uh, with my PhD program. And when I returned home to work, I found even more of the folk literature that's worth studying. And then uh, later on, I discovered that uh, Northeast Thai people uh, or children were not interested in local literature. I asked children, uh, I spoke to them in local dialects, and they answered me in Central Thai, mainstream Thai. I began to feel worried. And then I asked them if they know any of the Northeast Thai uh, folk tales, and they said, yes, yes, we know. What do you know? Cinderella, that's Cinderella in, in, in Thai. And then somebody said, Snow White. I said, oh, that's Snow White. And then one little boy said, Mu um, Sam uh, which is three little pigs. I said, oh, no. And then one little hand said, 12 sisters. I said, yes, that's Northeast Thai folk epic. And I was hoping that uh, the girl heard the story from the grandparents or something, but she said, she watched TV. And so I began to feel that I should do something about folk literature, bringing back uh, our folk literature to the attention of scholars. So I began the uh, storytelling project in Northeast Thailand, uh, training young people in the university to collect, select, adapt story and tell stories. And then I would take them to tell stories in elementary school in Northeast Thailand. And that's one of the research projects that uh, was not well accepted at first, because people said, you are telling stories, that's fun. You don't need money, you don't need any support. And I, bec I still continue doing it. So uh, that research was uh, to use storytelling to encourage children to have the love and understanding and pride in their own cultural heritage. It's a three-year project, and uh, I did the research, and it was successful at the end. Uh, the children uh, became interested in their own folk literature. And my research did not stop there. I continue that was elementary school level, and then I continue doing similar projects training secondary school students to collect stories, select, adapt, and tell stories. And when I say collect story, they would go back to their parents and grandparents to ask for stories, and then they would come back and retell the stories. So in that way, the body of folk literature in Northeast Thailand is increasing instead of uh, being unknown or forgotten. And so I say I would like to uh, propose uh, research in folk literature as part of uh, uh, literary research because folk literature, as we know, uh, is both written and oral text. And I would like to quote uh, Professor Temsura Ao from uh, Nagaland. She said, all writing comes from folk literature. So uh, we could or go back to our own folk literature and really agree with you that uh, Indian tradition, Indian literature, folk literature is much, much to learn instead of just going, I am not po opposing to any of the classic, but we should do uh, the research on both um, classical uh, literature as in the West so we will know what they are like and then also emphasize our own literature. Uh, so uh, I have this to say, but I have some more later. <laughs>